And welcome back. Hey, I'm the Doc Bob Lee. And um, check it out. You haven't heard about this. It's a rare disease called myasthenia gravis. And, um, but it's a chronic autoimmune system disease, autoantibody uh, condition of the nervous system that affects the muscle strength and makes everyday activities challenging. So I have Meredith O'Connor. Uh, she's a patient advocacy specialist and is uh, living with the disease. And uh, she's joining us to tell us uh, her story, along with the leading expert, Dr. Nicholas Silvestri. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks Thank for you. having us. I had to come back to the desk over here. <laughs> How are you guys doing? And uh, what's it all about? I mean, it's a rare disease. Not too many people are heard about it. And in, in fact, this is the first time that some people are, are, are listening and, 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 and watching and hearing about it. Tell us more. Yeah, so as you pointed out, uh, this uh, disease, it's an autoimmune disease. So the body's immune system is attacking uh, the muscle cells uh, yeah. for reasons we don't quite understand. And obviously when muscles are affected, uh, people with the disease develop weakness. And that weakness can really involve any muscle of the body, but common symptoms include droopiness of the eyelids, double vision, problems with chewing, speaking, swallowing, or weakness of the neck, arms, and legs. And as you can imagine, when people have these symptoms, they're quite significantly and severely impacted, and it really has an impact on their quality of life. Yeah, and it's called myasthenia gravis. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. And how you did, got it. Yeah, how did, uh, how did they come up with that name for it? Uh, how did they... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's actually uh, it, it's a it's a combination of Latin and Greek, which basically uh, translated means uh, fatigue of muscles or weakness of muscles that fatigue can be of muscles serious or, or grave. Of muscles. Yeah, yeah. And um, the young lady next to you, Meredith, is that uh, one of your patients? Uh, no, Meredith is not one of my patients. Meredith, how did you get involved? Sure. Well, uh, like if, um, you mentioned, I'm living with the diagnosis. I've been living with it since 2005. Um, and yes, myasthenia gravis means grave muscle weakness. Um, and that's exactly what I live with every single day. Um, and I had all the symptoms that Dr. Mm -hmm. Silvestri had mentioned when trying to get an accurate diagnosis. I was yeah. misdiagnosed for two years, <clears throat> but um, have built my career around advocacy and am now the Assistant Vice President of Patient Engagement Advocacy and Policy at the National Organization, uh, Myasthenia Gravis Foundation of America. Yeah. How did you know that you had something like that? And how did you know what to do? I guess you were trying to find out, hey, I have a problem. I need this uh, corrected. How right, did it happen right. to you? Well yeah, so it's it, it started in my eyes, um, and that's pretty typical, and then slowly progressed um, to my speech and, and chewing and swallowing abilities, and then in my arms, legs, and neck. But it was a very gradual process. Um, but I was met a lot with, um, you know, people thought it was all in my head or that I was making it yeah. up. You know, it, it being rare and me being diagnosed at such a young age, those were, you know, two, two factors, not all, but uh, two that, you know, caused me to get, um, you know, a diagnosis and not in a very timely manner. Yeah. Well, you look like you're doing well now. Yeah, doing really well. Yeah. I would say my MG is really well managed today, but taking me a long time to get here. But yes, doing really well. Is it a special medication that you have to work with to make everything sure, work Sure, yeah. Well? So, yeah, uh, I would say, you know, there's, there's this step therapy that uh, MG patients are usually involved in, but every treatment, every patient is different. We call it a snowflake disease, meaning the symptoms manifest differently and uh, treatments are, the decision is made based upon multiple factors. Yeah. So I'm on a very um, personalized treatment plan. Yeah. Dr. Silvestri, why is it called a snowflake treatment? And uh, why is it important to build awareness and understanding around this uh, particular disease? Yeah, I mean, the snowflake reference really refers to each patient being a little bit different uh, with different factors. And that really, yeah. again, uh, has a direct impact on how we choose to treat patients uh, in terms of what medications or other therapies. A lot has to do with patients' age, their other medical conditions, et cetera. But it's really important to raise awareness because we want people that have symptoms of myasthenia to be diagnosed accurately and early so we can start those therapies. 
But it's also important to know that about 20% of patients with myasthenia don't respond well to the currently available therapies. So we're really trying to shine a light on the disease to really talk about the need for further development, further innovation to treat yes. people with the disease. Meredith, are you out in the community? Uh, are you creating awareness that way? Are you going to different schools or how are you getting the message out? Oh, yeah. So uh, June is always an active month for MG Awareness Month. But um, yeah, continuing to advocate on behalf of my community through writing, speaking, um, you know, working with other organizations around rare disease. But um, yeah, and encouraging people to get involved in and support groups and networks and, and engage with others that are going through something similar to this. And, and I always encourage people to uh, get in touch and obtain resources that we have. Like I said, we have so many resources resources now that are available to yeah. us that we didn't have 20 years ago. So um, encouraging uh, access to those uh, for greater awareness. Yeah. Doctor, how do you pinpoint this disease of uh, myasthenia gravis? How, how do you, I'm sure there's other diseases that give the look that it may be that. How, how do you come to uh, the terms that this is that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, it's it's all about taking a detailed and thorough neurological history, doing a neurological examination, and then when we have an index of suspicion for myasthenia gravis, thankfully there are blood tests to check for it. So about 90% of people with myasthenia have the antibody in their blood that we can check, and when it becomes positive or when it when we returns positive, we make the diagnosis and we start therapy. Mm. Doctor, where are you practicing now? I practice at the University of Buffalo Jacobs School of Medicine in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. That's great. Doc, thanks for all that you do. Thank you for creating thank the you. awareness. Meredith, thank you also. Thank you. All right. Where can we go to find out more about it? Uh, you have a, a website or your social media? Uh, both of you sure, can, yeah, can give it to us. Yeah, various resources, but I would recommend going to imaginemymg.com. Um, you can also go to the website, the national website, myasthenia.org. Hmm. And Doc? I fully endorse both those resources. They're great resources for people. <laughs> great. Are you going to be anywhere um, where maybe giving a, a maybe a talk somewhere where we can come out and, and, and see what you're doing or hear more about it? Uh Absolutely. I, you know, I, I have a pretty good presence uh, online, uh, and uh, I'm known to make the rounds in different places to uh, to give talks as well. Uh, so uh, just ch check out the web, and you'll find me. Well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Give us that thank website you, you. one more time. ImagineMyMG.com and Myasenia.org. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us. And come back again, okay? Share more. All right. Thank you. We'll take a break right here. I've got more open coming up next.